Barada Baub. So Welsh Histories has linked up with Illustrative DNA, and I would like to take some time to run through some of the features it provides while also revealing my results for the first time. Trust me, I was surprised by some of them. For those of you who have already completed DNA tests with other genealogical websites, you might find some comfort in the fact that Illustrative DNA lets you upload your raw data results from these other platforms for a price. So in short, you don't have to do another test if you have already completed one. Pretty cool, right? It is also worth mentioning that Illustrative DNA goes back much further than these other sites. For example, Ancestry, one of the more popular DNA websites, allows you to build family trees spanning generations. But your actual DNA results only cover a few of these generations. You are very unlikely to discover your ancient heritage, for example. Illustrative DNA specializes in this, allowing you to uncover some of your ancient and even pre-ancient history. Okay, let's take a look at some of my results so you can see what I mean. As you should now be able to see, clicking Deep Ancestry takes you to a screen containing multiple options. The first one is my arguable favorite, period periodical breakdown. This allows you to see which genetic fits your results most align with. It is preset to the ethnicity you have entered for yourself, so Northwest Europe for me, but you can change this as I do to cover global, or you can keep it the same. It is entirely your choice. You can also switch between historical periods from Bronze Age to Iron Age to Late Antiquity and to Middle Ages, essentially the medieval period. Looking at my results for Bronze Age, I can see that I am split between European Farmer, 45.4%, and Central Steppe, 38%, and most interestingly, Bronze Age Caucasian at 16.6%. I'll have to Google these later as I am less of an expert on this time period. So feel free to let me know what they mean if you do know already. If I go on to Iron Age, you can see that I am 39.8% Germanic, which makes sense given I am half English, 37.2% Insular Celt, which also makes sense given I am half Welsh and Irish, and 19.2% Continental Celt, 2.8% Italic and Etruscan, and Colchian, I don't know what that even is, at 1%. You can see how this makes sense given the connection between Continental and Insular Celts and perhaps some Italic Etruscan blood in romano Britons was passed down. I have no idea about Colchian though. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. So if you click on it, you can see what they are. So it says here the Colchis, and again, apologies, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, existed from the 13th century to the 1st century BCE, and they are regarded as an early South Caucasian speaking polity. Okay, pretty cool. So if you are ever lacking information on any of your results, you can just click them and you can find out more. If you scroll down, you can also see some research links connected to the ethnicity. Also, keep an eye on the genetic fit section. I Ideally, you want that number to be lower so that it is a higher likelihood of matching your own results or matching you, I should say. See the difference when it switches from Iron Age to Late Antiquity? That's likely because the more recent the time period, the better the match, which again makes sense because going back so far is very difficult to do. Late Antiquity again places me as mostly Germanic with 33.6%. However, this time I am more Continental Celt than Insular Celt as I am more Gaulish with 25.6% than Romano Britain with 24.6%. This is followed by the Pictish at 10.6 and Lazica, I'll have to check this one out, I don't know what this one is either, at 2.4% and Roman Iberian at 1.6%, Roman Sardinian at 1.4%. Papuan is very likely an outlier, I've read this happen sometimes, so I am very unlikely Papuan, even at 0.2%, who knows. And lastly, we have the Middle Ages. Notice how the color changes on the maps, this shows the location of your results, it is pretty much a freeway split this time between Insular Celt at 33.2%, Germanic at 32%, and France at 30%. I have family connections to each of these, with my George surname actually coming from France, so it makes a lot of sense. They are followed by uh, Iberian, at 2.4%, and Kartvelian, I don't know what that is. Okay, it looks like, oh, modern Georgian. Okay. Moving on from periodical breakdown, you can then see my hunter-gatherer farmer results, and these are pretty much a freeway split too. Again, I am not an expert on this aspect of history, so I won't go into too much detail here, but if you do know and are aware of what these might mean, please let me know, because I would be very interested. Then we have unsupervised analysis. So unsupervised analysis displays the most suitable two and three ancient populations or samples that represent your genetic profile. There are 50 different combinations and these are listed from best fitted to less. So it's basically just comparing how two different ethnicities will fit you and which one has the higher percentage, I guess. Weirdly, my best fit is this combination. So that's kind of interesting. You can also change it from ancient to modern and you can also change it from two way to three way. So if I go to modern, I am far more likely white American Utah than Papuan. We move on to closest populations, and this is a particular favorite of mine because I like seeing which populations I'm closest to, especially the present day. It's, it's kind of interesting to see that. So closest populations, as you can see on mine, my primary match on the ancient option is Iron Age Britain, which makes more sense than anything else, I guess. And then if I click onto the modern, 
Again, white American Utah. Very interesting, considering I am not American and I've only been there once in my life. Followed by Cornwall. I'll take that. That's my Kenoic brothers. Scottish, Welsh, and English Kent, which would make sense. Dutch and Irish follow, along with Orcadian, Breton, and Danish to see out the top 10. So in short, there is so much you can do with your results on illustrative DNA. Even better is that those behind it are constantly updating and perfecting it. And just in the last few months alone, there have been numerous updates to make the platform and your results even more better and accurate. There is also an active community present on Facebook, Reddit, and other social media, perhaps, which I haven't even checked out. And they contain hundreds, if not thousands, of like-minded people researching their own results, like yourself and me, and they'd be happy to help you. I'd be happy to help you too if you ever want to get in touch with me about it. So get on Illustrative DNA and uncover your history.